Hello, this is Kieran from Server Pro, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to install and use the plugin Citizens 2. So, let's get straight into it. So, the first thing that you need to do is download the plugin. So, you need to download different versions depending on which version of Minecraft you're running. So, if you check which version of Minecraft you're running, I'm running Spigot 1.11.2. So this page, and there'll be a link to this down in the description below, you can use um, this download link for any version above 1.10. If you're using a version before 1.10, you'll need to go to this website and you'll need to download the appropriate version by selecting the correct one. So if you're running Minecraft 1.8.1, for example, you would select this one, which says Alpha 1 for MC 1.8.1. Then you download that and upload it. But as I'm using the latest version, or one of the latest versions of Minecraft, I can download it from here. So if you're running the latest version, you'll notice this is only available if you purchase it. So I do recommend purchasing the plugin from the developer, as they take time out of their day to create these plugins for us to use. However, they do offer it for free if you read um, the post. You can download it here by clicking here, and then you'll need to download it onto your computer. So once you've downloaded the appropriate citizens.jar for your Minecraft server version, you can go ahead and upload it. So if you go to the control panel for your server, go to the file manager, go to the plugins folder, click upload file, choose files, and then select the .jar file that you just downloaded and click open, upload from computer, and then once it's uploaded, you can restart the server. Once your server has finished restarting, you can go ahead and join it so that we can take a look at the plugin in-game. So once you've joined your Minecraft server after installing Citizens, we can go ahead and start using the plugin. So to create a Citizen or NPC, stand on the block you want to create the NPC on, and then type slash NPC create and then the username for it. So you can use any name you want, so I could call it Bob H or I can give it a real player name, such as RacerK12, and then that citizen will have the skin of that player. So if I just go ahead and do that, you can see that it's been created with my skin, and it looks exactly the same as I do. So you can see there. So you can do that for any player in the game that has a premium Minecraft account. They don't even have to have joined your server, so I could do not just skin, I could do anyone's. So now that we've created an NPC within Citizens on our Minecraft server, let's add some more features to him. So at the moment he's just looking in one straight line, he's just a figure at the moment, he doesn't do anything. So let's make him look at us whilst we move around him. So if we type forward slash NPC look close, it will now rotate the NPC when there's a player near it and it will follow them round. So in addition to this we can add some text to it, so it will follow us round and it can send messages to us like it's speaking to us or you could have announcements or use it for whatever you wish. So if you type the command forward slash NPC text, it brings up a really helpful text editor. So let's add our first message. So type add and then click enter. And then enter the text that you want the NPC to say to players. So I'm going to put, hey, I'm the owner of the server. I hope you're having a great day. And then let's add another entry of text. So type add again. And then let's put, make sure you check out our website. So now we've got two lines of text for this NPC. So now let's make it so that it actually says these things. So you can do this with the close, com close um, command. So if you type close, that means it will start talking to people that are close to the NPC. So as you can see, it's already said the first message to me as I'm within the range. So you can also set the range. So if I was to walk out of this area, I believe it's five blocks by default, it will no longer speak to me. As you can see, it's only said those first two messages and it's not gonna, going to repeat them again. Whereas if I walk back into that area, it will say the messages again. So to change the range, just press enter and then go into the chat and type range and then the amount you want to change it to. As you can see, I previously set it to 10, um, but let's set it to something like seven. 
So now it's set to seven. If I go seven blocks away, it should still speak to me. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it should still speak to me here, but outside of this area, it will no longer speak to me. As you can see, it won't say any more messages to me. Whereas if I go back within this area, it should say a message to me. As you can see, it just did. So you can also change whether it says these messages randomly or in order. So if you type random, it will set it to true. And then that means it will say these messages in a random order. And if you set it to false, it will say them in the order that you created them. You can also edit the messages which you've created. So if you type edit, you can see it comes up with the entries that you've added. And then it says enter the index of the entry you want to um, change. So as you can see, they've got numbers here, zero and one. That's the index. So it's in order generally. So let's say I wanted to change this first one. So I'd type zero and then I can edit the text that's in this. So I'm going to change it to, hey, I'm the owner of the server. And I'm going to put the second part of the message in a color code, as you can use color codes in the chat. And then that just makes it a bit more colorful and a bit more um, cool for the player. So you can use um, color codes or whatever formatting codes you want within this as well, which is also nice. So let's say I wanted to just remove a text entry completely. Type remove and then it will ask you for the index. So again, that's the number that we just um, entered on the editing one. So let's say I wanted to remove the second one. I'd enter the index for it, which is one and click enter. So that's basically all you need to know about the text editor in Citizens. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to disable the talking as it will get a bit frustrating as we're going through commands and announcements are coming up. So I'm just gonna disable the closed talker. And then once you're done making all the changes you want to make in the text editor, type exit and then you'll return to normal chat where you can type and do normal commands. So now that we've finished editing the text, we can go ahead and add some waypoints. So this will allow the NPC to actually walk around different areas that you choose. So if you type forward slash NPC path, it comes up with some information about how we can add waypoints. So to add waypoints, just left click a block and that adds the first one and second and so on. So we're just gonna go around in this little um, rectangle. And as you can see, the NPC is now walking around this rectangle as we have added waypoints at each point. So you can do this for over long distances, short distances, um, or wherever you want. And you can remove waypoints by um, right clicking. And um, so if I was to right click now, it will remove the last one that I added. As you can see, it just removed the last one. And it should just skip that last one. As you can see, he jumped straight to that one instead of going to this corner. So you can go ahead and remove them all if you wanted to, and then you've got none left, and it will stay wherever um, he finished walking. So let's just go back and add them back in. And he should start walking again. So let's say you forgot where you added your waypoints. You can type toggle path, and it will show with a little ender eyes where your points are. So that can be quite useful when you're creating new routes and removing routes and so on. So you can get rid of them again by just typing toggle path. So once you're done adding all your waypoints and setting that up, you can type slash NPC path and that will exit the waypoint editor. So I've actually removed all my waypoints as I'm not going to be going over them again in this tutorial. So another cool command that's a part of citizens is TP. So you can TP to different NPCs. So if I do slash NPC TP, it will teleport me to the NPC I have selected. So if I was to create um, a couple more NPCs, you can see this in um, a better demonstration. So as you can see, I've created a couple more NPCs. And if I wanted to select one to TP to it, I would type slash NPC select and then the name of it. So let's say I wanted to teleport to James. I would type his name and then I'd type slash NPC TP and I would TP directly to him, as you can see. So another cool thing that you can do is mount NPCs and like move them like a horse, for example. So to do this, you need to type slash NPC controllable and that makes them controllable basically. So now you can type slash NPC mount and then as you can see, I'm on top of him and I'm walking around. So you can use this just as a cool feature on your server or you can move them to specific blocks where you want them to, to be, for example. And then to let go, just um, use your left shift to dismount like you would any other animal in Minecraft. So that's the main or basic features that are available in the Citizens plugin. There are loads of other things you can do with this plugin. So I would recommend checking out all the other commands, maybe with NPC help and it lists all them for you as we went through at the start of the tutorial. Or you can go ahead and go in the Citizens wiki. There'll be a link to that down in the description below. So now we're going to take a very quick look at the configuration files. So if you go to the control panel for your Minecraft server, 
and then go to the file manager, then go to the plugins folder, you should see a new folder here called citizens. So if we go inside of that and then go inside the config.yml, you can see loads of different settings for the citizens plugin. Now, we're not going to be going over most of these as they are pretty self-explanatory. For example, this default area here defines the default settings for the citizens plugin. For example, by default, the look close where the citizen looks at you while you move around is set to false and the range is five. So it only does it within five blocks. So it is really simple to understand. Um, so go ahead and edit this at your own will. If you need any help with it, be sure to check out the Citizens Wiki. They have a great wiki which you can open on their plugin page. And if you have any problems aside from that, feel free to contact our support. You can contact our support on our website by going to server.pro, then support, and then click message us. And our support team are very friendly and they'll be happy to help you with any problems that you may run into. So thank you for watching. I hope that you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.